In front of us, we have two um, cross sections that we can make corridors out of. Uh, the top, we're going to be looking at that the most. The subassembly, I'm sorry, the assembly is the vertical line that all the subassemblies sub get attached to. And so it's kind of like a set of building blocks. You'll first have an assembly, and then you'll start bringing in these, these pieces here and attaching them to the previous piece. So, so this one gets attached to the assembly. This piece right here gets attached to the end of the lane right at this point. And then this one, the sidewalk, gets attached to the back of the curb. And so you, you start from the inside and you work out. Make sure that you are naming things appropriately. Um, make sure that they're, they're named left and right. If we click on the assembly and we look at its properties, we can see the construction. And I have on the right side, I have right lane, right curb and gutter, right sidewalk. On the left side, left lane, left curb and gutter, and left sidewalk. You'll need to make sure that those are labeled properly because when it comes to mapping down the road, if they're not named properly, uh, you'll get very confused. So, uh, the other thing about this, this whole situation here is you can't do a lot of stuff with the, the subassembly as far as its a visual look goes uh, from the subassembly properties. All you can change are the physical characteristics, which is the width and the slope and, and the depth of each layer going down here, but as far as the hatch goes and and uh, and things like that, that has to be done in the assembly properties. If I go to codes right here, there's I cannot select the, the code set style, and all of these areas right here are all grayed out. So, what we need to do, if we want to change the look of this cross section, we can select the assembly, we can go to the assembly properties and before we do that I want to take a look at this this shape and so each assembly is made up of links which are the outer lines the red lines you see there uh, the points which are the vertices of each link and the shape which is the area on the inside of each closed polyline so with that now we can look at the assembly properties and we can look at the construction of that and here we can we can uh, override some of the normal values that we we uh, we defined this these sub assemblies at and now we can go to the codes and although these are grayed out right here we can select the the edit button and edit the default code set style once we're in here now we can start changing the links and the, uh, the points and the shapes if we like. So here we'll look at the link at first. And so this, this, this link up at the top here, if I, if I use the, the link called top right here and I put a label on it, the label would go all the way across. It would it would give a, a label, a percent label for the gutter pan and the face of curb and the top of curb and the sod and the sidewalk and, and the sod again all the way through. And so it gets pretty messy if we were to do that. Let's do that really quick and kind of show you the, the, uh, the results of that. And so this is not very useful information. So what we do on the link, we use the pave link and put that label on, on only on the pave link. That way we don't get this uh, mixed up set of uh, information here. So we're going we're gonna to say none to that. We're going to say OK and apply that so it's only going across the roadway. If we wanted the sidewalk to have that, if for some reason the sidewalk was going to um, uh, jump around a little bit, we could put that slope or any kind of other label if we wanted to on that. The problem with the, the, the sidewalk is it also shows the verticals and it shows the lower level and the upper level. 
And again, that's not what we want. So uh, the best thing to do is just to um, have a label on the, on the top pave link. And that gives us all the information that we really need to have. The sidewalk's not going to adjust uh, with its slope, so on and so forth. So this is the basic cross section that we have here. And once again, we cannot, we cannot make too many changes except for the physical changes on the subassembly. If we want to change the look of it with the hatch and the colors and things like that, and any labeling, we have to go to the assembly. Right here, we show the sub sub base here and the sub base here as the same thing as the base. If we want that to be different, again, we have to choose the assembly. We'll look at its properties and go to the code set style. And so the shape that we're looking at is the sub base and it's set to the base style. That's why it looks the same as the base. If we choose uh, the sub base style, which has been predefined, but we can always go in and change it to anything we want right here. This is a component hatch. This is the hatch we're using, the angle and the scale. And of course, the color of the hatch is right here. But if we wanted that to look different, we can certainly do that. And when we set the sub base to its own style and define that style, it takes on those characteristics. So it's through this that we will define the, the, the entire assembly um, group, group here. Um, and um, uh, we will be making a corridor out of this a little bit later on. You can see that I thickened up the, the uh, left side subgrade or uh, sub base. And so if I look at this and I look at the parameters, and the sub base depth is three and a half feet. And I can go to the right hand side and do the same. Sub base parameter 3.5 feet. You say OK. And of course, it's the same as the other side now. This sub assembly down here, uh, there is one sub assembly here that is, is omitted. And so in order to be able to turn that on and off, this is just a line depicting where that, that omitted link would be. But if you want to turn that on and off, then what you would do is select the assembly. You go to the, uh, the, the, uh, the component, the hidden right link, and you'd turn that, uh, the, the, hidden, the hidden quality of it, to know. And when you do, this green line shows up. We want it hidden because this is a widening scenario. Uh, and so we want the assembly to go down the center line of the road. We don't want the assembly to ride along the saw cut line of the widening portion only because it, it does not include other things that we need for this whole project. So what we do is we connect it to here and then we tell this point right here of the of the uh, of the group to ride along that saw cut line in both the horizontal and vertical locations and uh, that will give us the results that we want and then we hide this just not to show that in fact it's uh, going to the center of the road because we're, we're going to leave this portion of the existing road and we're just adding on this portion and attaching a, a new curb and gutter and sidewalk to it. So that's the reason for that. But if you do need to turn that on or off, I can turn it off here because I can select it. I can use the subassembly properties, go to here and say omit yes, and now it will disappear but it will still be attached to the center line assembly. And that's, again, very important to uh, remember. You want all your assemblies, for the most part, the centerline assemblies, to be attached to the centerline of the road.